I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Physics with Beth and Beth. We're in the AP Physics 1 curriculum, of course. Unit 2, still dynamics. We're still working on these centripetal motion problems. Today we're going to do a banked curve. We're going to ignore friction on that banked curve. It's a little hard to see banked curves on 2D surfaces. All right, we have a car that is actually going around a corner, but it's not a flat. If it's a flat corner and a car is going around that flat corner, all you have is friction. Uh, because if there's ice there, the car's going straight off. But this is a banked curve. It means that your road is actually at an angle and your car is coming around, still moving in a circle, but it's banked, it's at an angle. All right, I already started the free body diagram here. I have force due to gravity that's straight down and I have normal that's perpendicular to the road. All right, those are the only two forces because we're ignoring friction to make this problem a little bit more manageable. And then this whole road is banked at an angle. Now here's what you, the first thing you need to do is not think of this as a ramp. All right, this, we're not gonna be summing forces perpendicular and then uh, forces parallel to the, to the ramp. This is a banked curve. In other words, this car is moving in an angle in a circle. That means that centripetal motion, this is the direction of centripetal motion, straight into the center, center seeking. So we're gonna be summing forces in this banked curve that are centripetal forces, all right, and then we're going to have to sum forces momentarily that are in the y direction, straight y, up and down. So you cannot think of this as a ramp. And the centripetal motion, by the way, is going to be the horizontal. It's going to be the x direction. Whereas this force due to gravity and the y component of this normal force, they're going to be in the, in the straight y vertical direction. I say Y, but vertical. And there's not going to be any acceleration in the Y. The car is not going to be moving up in the air, nor is it going to be sinking down straight through the road. All right, but centripetal motion is towards the center as this car goes around the corner. Very hard to see in 2D, but that's the best. <laughs> I hope I explained that well enough you can understand it. So we're just going to jump right in. Centripetal force. We've got to figure out what force is centripetal. Which force actually has a component to it in the x direction or the horizontal direction. Well, force due to gravity is straight in the y, in the vertical. So that's not a centripetal force here. But look at your normal. Now, do not do this on your free body diagram. Our free body diagram would just be this, our normal force and our force due to gravity. All right, but I'm going to draw on here that that's a northeast force. That means there's a north vector and then there's an east vector. This is that normal force in the y, and this is that normal force in the x. And then the whole thing, I'll write down here, is the whole uh, hypotenuse is the whole normal force, and that's in the x. All right, so we have an x component and a y component, a north component and an east component. That east component is the only force that is center seeking. So it is your centripetal force, not the whole normal force, but the normal force that's in the x direction. So I'm gonna write that down. We have the normal force that's in the x direction equals mass. We know that our centripetal acceleration is that constant velocity over r. That's gonna be v squared over r. Then I have to figure out what is an expression for my normal force in the x. Okay, if this is theta, then this is theta. And I'm not going to waste your time proving that on this video, but you could certainly prove that um, in trigger geometry that this is theta. If this is theta, the normal force in the x is opposite to the angle. That means it's sine. That means if I go over here and I do sine theta equals my opposite side, which is that force of the normal horizontal or in the x direction over my whole hypotenuse, which is force normal. I'm going to multiply force normal by both sides. And I'm going to get that, that an expression for that normal force in the x direction. And I'm getting a little sloppy with all those vectors. Uh, sorry about that. Now I'm going to take this whole 
expression and I'm going to plug it in here for my normal force in the horizontal direction. It's going to be the normal force, the whole normal force times sine theta equals mass times v squared over r. All right, well they asked for an expression for velocity using theta r uh, little g constants and mass. Okay, well look, again, it's just like the conical, in fact this problem, by the way, is going to turn out exactly like the conical uh, pendulum problem, only instead of the centripetal force being uh, tension, the string, the centripetal force is going to be your normal force in that x direction. So, um, and I should say for the conical, the centripetal force is the force of tension in that x direction as well. All right, so it's going to look exactly the same. You're going to be, wait, didn't I just watch a video on this? Yes, it's the same, okay? So I can't have this normal force in my expression. I can only have theta, r, g, and m. Also, the other, in the conical pendulum, you're always dealing with length of string. In a curved uh, road, you get to use radius of the curve, so that's nice. You get to skip that stuff. Uh, if you saw the video earlier. All right, so I need to figure out an expression for normal. So just like in the conical pendulum formula uh, uh, video, right, that we just did, you're going to be summing the forces in the y direction now, which we talked about doing right here. We're going to sum those forces in the y equal mass times acceleration in the y. We already said, hey, this car's not moving in the y direction. It's not flying up straight in the air. It's not coming straight down through the road. So its acceleration in the y is just zero. So you have uh, that normal force in the y that's pointed up because it's north. It's the north component of that normal force minus that force due to gravity equals zero. We add force due to gravity to both sides, so we get this. We know that force due to gravity is mg, so that's going to be mg, and that's going to be that force normal in the y. And now we got to figure out an expression for it. Well, if this is theta, that force normal in the y is adjacent to it. All right, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do, hey, cosine theta equals the adjacent side, which is that normal in the y, uh, over the hypotenuse, which is the whole normal force. I'm going to multiply normal force by both sides, and I get the, the normal in the y, and I'm making these uh, subscripts a little too big there, is normal force times cosine theta. I'm going to plug that in, so I have normal force cosine theta equals mg. I'm going to divide by cosine theta so I can get normal force by itself. And you're like, oh my land, wait a minute, I missed the last video. What in the world are you doing? Okay, I have to get this out of my expression for velocity because I can only have theta, the radius, little g, constants, and mass. And we're going to end up not needing mass, but anyway. Uh, but they always give you something extra. All right, I can't have this force normal in my expression. So I just found something, another expression that equals normal force to plug in here. And I can't have m, g, and theta in my expression. So we are headed in the right direction. So I'm gonna sub that in for my normal force I know is mg cosine theta times sine theta, because look, sine theta is still there didn't go anywhere, times mass times my velocity squared over r, that constant velocity. Look, everybody brought mass to the party. Cue Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus, so we could dance to Party in the USA as we cancel out mass. And we also know sine theta divided by cosine theta is tangent theta. So I'm left with g tangent theta on this side equals that velocity squared over the radius. I multiply radius, I have rg tan theta equals velocity squared. I take the square root of that, and now I have an expression that meets all of the guidelines they gave me. I have r, I have g, I have theta, and I didn't need mass. They always like to throw in something extra to see if you know what you're talking about. So it's the square root of the radius times little g times uh, tangent theta equals the velocity. That's how you would get that. Now, they might ask the question this way. Instead of an expression for velocity, they might say, hey, find your maximum velocity at an angle of 3.5 degrees. 
Well, all you do, they would have to give you the radius of the curve. They may they say the radius is 200 meters. All right, well then they would have to give you the radius. You would know that. You know that's 9.81 and you know your theta is 3.5 and you just solve for V. And that would be your maximum velocity. Now the other way they may ask it, and they frequently do, is what's the maximum angle? Uh, that you can have if, again, they would give you a radius is like 200 meters and your velocity is 18 meters per second. Okay, if they ask for that, we're just going to solve this down here a little bit differently. I'm going to just kind of take out the last couple of steps where we ended up with canceling out. We'd already canceled out our mass. We had g tangent theta equals v squared over r. All right. Now, so we're going to start from here, and we're going to solve for theta now. All right, so now I have tan theta equals v squared over, I'm going to divide both sides by g, and I get rg. All right, well now I want theta though, so tangent is not a number you can divide by, it's a function, so you have to take the inverse. So we have theta equals tangent inverse of v squared over r, the radius, times little g. And that will give you that maximum angle, and you would plug in for v, you would plug in 18, because I said, hey, what the angles of v is 18, and radius is 200. It would be 18 squared divided by your 200 for your radius, and then divided by little g, which is 9.81. And you would take the inverse tangent of that, and you would get what your theta, minimum theta is. So that's how you would do it. It's really the three ways they ask this question. Main thing, this is not a ramp. You're still going to be summing, summing forces in the y direction. And you're going to be summing forces, but the centripetal forces are in the horizontal, the x direction in this, because your centripetal forces center seeking straight towards the middle of that curve. All right, I hope that helps. If you like this video, please like it. And, um, and also, if you want to see more videos by us, please subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you for watching, and happy physicsing.